Hi, I'm Angelique Jordan St. Jewel, and today I'm going to be discussing the development of situation five and six for the fractured frame digital design. A bit about myself, um, obviously a developing digital designer, but my background came from in the performing arts, so theatre, live music, and I have a particular interest in interactive art installations, uh, virtual programming, and developing motion graphics for a live space. So initially I was particularly interested in situation one because I love, first of all, reflective art. I think I'm really got a thing for reflections and how they change within a space and also how an image changes depending on where the viewer is standing in the room. And I really started to play with the textures and sort of the stories that the images each create. Um, but also enjoyed playing around with negative space so what you don't necessarily see on the canvas that you're projecting on. So for situation two, adapting the concept of negative space or the illumination um, of exploring, I imagine using the space to reveal images like someone walking in the dark space and shining a torchlight to reveal what is hidden in the screen. So this could be adapted in an immersive space by using Connect and could make this space more engaging for the observer as I've adapted from the two scenarios. Key word here would be go and explore. For situations five and six, I started a process of brainstorming, working on key words, and initially got a bit stuck, so I decided to do a process of test and play, um, just to see how light and how the images would work since my resources and my accessibility to projectors was limited. So when I was researching and looking at different images for inspiration, I got really obsessed with glass art. And stained glass art is probably one of my favorite things. And so I played with this idea in a bathroom and had the image reflecting through a glass uh, wall of a shower and the way it would reflect off the tiles. And I found it really interesting, but I found that I was approaching it from uh, not developing imagery particularly for that space, but rather what that space would do to the image. And so I kind of needed to take a bit of a rethink on how I was approaching it. I think the penny drop moment was actually when I was still playing with the projections on water was when, as you can see here, the hand coming in to the reflection and how vivid it shows on the body. But it really started to make me think when we're playing around with projections, you know, and if you have a projection in this space, even if you're watching a movie, it's always that moment of, oh, sorry, am I standing in the way? Am I, how, like you're quite often when you're, even if you were just projecting on a wall, if someone stands up, their shadow um, blocks the view, it blocks the image. So I really wanted to explore how we take the human or the observer in the space and actually make them part of the art. So they're welcome to be in that space. So just a few of my influences before I get stuck into situation five. Um, Olaf Eliason, he's a Dutch Icelandic uh, um, interactive installation artist. And he really sort of explores the use of light and color and the observers within this space, particularly with the monochromatic room, as you can see in the image here. The whole room was yellow, but all the observers in the space were black and white. And he really invites his viewers to bring their own meaning to, to a space. And he actually really makes it about them and their own exploration. Um, then there's VJ Zhu, who had an installation at Fremantle Prison, where they use a knitting texture design and used to connect so people could see their faces projected on the wall. So of all the installations I've been able to see them do, this was the most I had seen people engage within the space. And I think one of the key things here is embodiment and going off what Brendan has often discussed in class, you know, the ever growing trend in artworks being interactive. There's this desire to be seen and the part of the in and being part of the installation is what really captures viewers which Miguel Chevalier and Noto Bene Visuals explore where you can see people walking across the canvas and the graphics change. And the same here when people are walking through the space and their shadows are changing as they're projected onto the wall. So this leads us directly into situation five being that the canvas is projected onto the floor 
and the other image or the art itself is when the observer's shadow using a connect is projected onto the wall. So tying together the concept of embodiment and my obsession with glass art and just the beauty of the reflections of the colours, the situation would be using mosaic sort of reflections, sort of the idea that the mosaic was shining down onto the floor and it's because of the observer's presence that their the art itself exists. I did want to develop I do want to develop a little bit more on this concept of illuminating in this space and how we affect that space by this concept that came from this image here being that the you know something can seem dark like a nightmare but when you shine a light, it's not so bad. And this is something I, I further want to explore when I develop more of this situation. You know, this idea of maybe two projectors having this within the scene and having a dark space and selling the idea of that person's presence is what brings everything to light. So situation six, I would argue, is not as conceptually developed, but I did want to just have a play with exploring how our understanding of a sculpture can change with the use of abstract imagery and I came across these sculptures in the Carlton Gardens of Melbourne which were actually designed by Akio Magagawe who is a um, Japanese born Australian designer um, and a lot of his works are based around the cerebral so reflecting on memory and time and Initially in the process, which I recreated these in in Maya um, and had a play with the different kinds of imagery that could just evolve or, you know, just to pop around with some ideas. Um, I dug a little bit deeper and understanding sort of the, in what's called Ugodai, which is the philo Japanese philosophy for esoteric Buddhism. Um, each of the elements, so the five natural elements being fire, water, air, earth, and void, all kind of tie into the way that we understand life. And so I later went back and actually included the sixth pillar because that started to re sort of recreate some more ideas. And if we were to go with th these elements, earth, chi, water, su, fire, ka, wind, Fu and void ku, it they kind of can act semantically as or be interpreted as human emotions. And in retrospect, one can't exist without the other. So I started to play around with the different shapes and how each of those pillars could make up one of the elements and how it all becomes a whole in the end. Um, so simply going off a gumball machine and each of the pillars would be releasing a certain emotion which would then affect the sixth pillar. Um, I also played around with, there's an app called This Is Sand Art and essentially I'm at the cusp of this idea of using the textures and graphics of those elements and building an image in the final pillar. Like I said, this one isn't as developed because I have paid more attention to the development of situation five, but using situation six was just really fun to have a good play and really start to just work on the shapes and how simple shapes can create their own meaning.